Let's bring in former CIA agent Fred Flight and also Ron Hosko, who's sticking around with us to continue this conversation. Taking a look, guys, at this Sony hack. And Fred, we'll start with you. As someone who's done a lot of analysis of intelligence, Fred, what did it say to you about how long it took the United States to directly link this attack to North Korea? I, I think the problem is that our intelligence agencies probably linked it fairly quickly, but U.S. officials were reluctant to admit the link. I, I don't know if it was out of pride or maybe they had this notion that North Korea couldn't possibly have a cyber warfare capability. They reportedly have 1,800 uh, officers working in cyber warfare, some of them uh, uh, located around the world. It, it's a pretty significant effort. And Ron, you know, obviously the FBI plays a huge role in these types of investigations here. How do you feel uh, like the FBI is at this point in terms of being equipped to deal with uh, the investigation of this type of attack? The FBI is very well equipped to, to deal with it, to uh, take these attacks back to their source. But I think our challenge as a nation is we are still more in a reactive uh, posture where attacks happen and then we discover them, either because of the great damage that's been done like Sony uh, or in other cases where we see information go, we're not sure what it was that went, we have a pretty good idea of who took it, uh, but we're in a reactive mode and we're not in, in the posture where we are effectively defending against it. Now, Fred, some of the Hollywood community have been the most vocally supportive of the Edward Snowdens of the world saying, you know, that he is just trying to ensure free speech. But here we have a foreign nation, a communist dictator, essentially reach into the United States and censor a movie here. Are you surprised um, the, 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 of Hollywood's reaction here so far? Yeah, I don't know where Hollywood was when Sarah Palin's emails were leaked. Yeah. I, I don't remember them saying anything other than laughing at it. I. I Leaking of this confidential information from Sony's computers, I, I think that's reprehensible. But I, I see a bit of a double standard here, that they're worried about their own secrets and not the secrets of people on the other side of the political fence. And, and Ron, what kind of impact do you think this has on the conversation when so many of these same kind of younger Hollywood elites were so critical of the NSA and all the, the surveillance type stuff that's supposed to try and help prevent these types of attack? Do you think this will change the conversation maybe a little bit? I hope it does. Uh, I, too, see and sense hypocrisy in some of the discussion coming from Sony. Uh, we have the Snowden disclosures now this morning coming here today. I heard uh, more information maybe coming off of WikiLeaks that may uh, identify CIA agents working abroad. Those are, are state secrets, and I think it's incredibly troubling that that gets out there. And to the extent that Sony or others would say, well, that's just free speech, I, I don't uh, support that view. I think it is very troubling what happened to Sony. Uh, it would be interesting to see what our, na our national response is, if anything. And frankly, I hope it's not telegraphed. All right, Ron Hosko, we want to thank you very much for being with us. And uh, we're going to say goodbye right now and continue the conversation with Fred. Ron Hosko has to run. He's the, uh, the former deputy director of the FBI and also the executive director of the Law Enforcement Defense Fund. And Fred, we're going to continue uh, talking to you a little bit about b these new threats coming from North Korea, threatening to strike both the White House and the Pentagon uh, uh, in the wake of all this with the Sony hacking scandal. When you hear these types of threats coming from North Korea, based on the success, and we hate to use that term, but the success they have with the Sony hack, how do you think uh, the intelligence community is responding right now? I think our intelligence officers are, are responding well. I think they've been tracking this very closely. Uh, there, there have been reports for a number of years about uh, North Korea's uh, cyber uh, capabilities. I guess what I'm concerned, John, is that we're focusing on what North Korea was able to do with its relatively small cyber operation. But China and Russia and even Iran probably have much larger operations. And if, if the North Koreans got into Sony's computers this easily, what are these other nations doing? And that's a, a fantastic point. In fact, let's take a listen to Mike Rogers, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, lashing out, talking about the president headed off to vacation uh, in the midst of all this. Let's take a listen. This was a nation-state attack on the United States, and saying aloha and getting on an airplane going to Hawaii is not the answer that uh, really the world needs. Now, now, Fred, there's obviously limits in what the president can do in terms of calling out some of the other nation-states that you just mentioned here, but are you surprised? I mean, we know the president is in contact. He's got a lot of his staff traveling with him in Hawaii. He's in communication, but uh, are you surprised that he still chose to go considering that there was likely some sort of connection perhaps to Iran, Russia, or China here? 
I'm not concerned that he went on vacation. I think presidents deserve some time off. It's Christmas time after all. I'm very concerned he won't call this a terrorist attack. This is a, this is a cyber terrorist attack. This only, this only targeted the, com the, the computers of an entertainment company. The Chinese have stolen dozens of very sensitive defense secrets, including stealth technology being used in the new stealth fighter. Who knows what the Iranians have stolen? I mean, this, this is, I don't see the urgency here to deal with his, what is obviously a very serious security threat from the president. And what do you think, Fred, an act of terrorism, an act of war, as somebody said? How would you classify it? I'd say we, it, it's cyber war, and I think it's an act of terrorism. And, you know, in turn, you mentioned the term cyber war. How, then, what is an appropriate response? Well, I don't think there's a lot that we can do to the North Koreans. And I, I've heard some strategists say that on TV. I, I think uh, uh, Charles Krauthammer said, are we going to do a cyber attack against North Korea to uh, knock down their two-car trolley system in Pyongyang? Um, there should be consequences for North Korea when they come to us next time for... Uh, uh, aid that they're hoping to get a after a crisis, or maybe if they want to resume nuclear talks, if they don't behave themselves, I don't think that we should play ball with them. Yeah, and again, you know, they continue to be uh, encouraged to do only more when we hear new threats coming out of North Korea, but uh, a lot of folks want that instant kind of gratification, their, their response very quickly, Fred, but as you mentioned, maybe it's not the right response right now. We'll have to see how this all plays out. Uh, Fred Flights, thanks so much for being with us. Always a pleasure to talk to you and get your insight as a former a CIA analyst. Good to be here. America's Forum with Fred Tarkington and Dick Morris. But now we're going to turn it over to Miranda Kahn, who's going to bring you a Newsmax Now update.